Well, here's what they're not telling you about the housing market as we roll into 2023 as compared to 2007 when the sky was falling, we had this massive housing crisis. For one, we haven't seen 8 million jobs lost like we did back in 2005, 6, 7, and 8. And not only were there jobs lost, but you had people that purchased homes with what they call BC lenders. Now, those were subprime loans. And some of these loans were given to people that there was no verification of their credit score. They called those ninja loans. There no income, no job job, no asset, you get to buy a house. You had a lot of people that were able to purchase houses. They were given loans for homes and they really weren't qualified in retrospect to what they should have been qualified for. Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. My name is Alex. That's Kirby. Now Kirby, I know you relate to this video because you are a ninja loan user or you were ex ninja loan. <laughs> so, right, right. So please speak on this. Uh, what was it? Uh, what can you compare to the last recession and today, what's going on today? Well, what we said is absolutely right. I mean, we've seen a million and one, you know, crash videos, the world's coming to an end. Like we talked on on this channel, uh, we believe the crash is coming, but a crash in transactions is going to be, it wasn't going to be the 2020 or 2022, you know, houses flying off the shelf, you know, five minutes after it been on the market. Uh, houses are going to stay on the market longer. You know, the average used to be 60 days a house stayed on market to sell, you know, before this, you know, the COVID, the COVID raid of housing. But this is absolutely true. The the ninja loans, I was a part of it. Just had a heartbeat. They gave me, they let me build a house, you know. And it was people like that in my shoes left and right. I mean, I was fortunate enough to get out of it, but that was the setup then you know you had people that was getting long arm loans i mean it was people in my family that had arm loans and then when that rate readjusted at a higher interest rate it was no way in the world they could afford the mortgage i knew people that had uh rental properties that was on arm loans five one arms teaser loans all that other stuff when the interest rate bumped up the rent that the tenants was paying in the middle of their lease wasn't nowhere it was missing the mark by like three four five hundred dollars and the landlord didn't have that buffer to cover so those things were going on 40 i believe 40 to 50 percent of the mortgages back in you know 05 06 07 when president bush came out with that uh affordable housing act policy that he came up with 40 percent of the loans on the market was these type of loans the ninja loans the arm loans and things like that Today, currently today, in 2023, only 4 to 6% of the loans on the market are arm loans. For, and I'm talking single family homes and stuff like that. I'm not talking about, you know, the commercial property. Of course, commercial property, 99% of commercial property is on arm loans. But I'm talking single family households because everybody keeps saying the housing market is going to crash. The price is going to decelerate, but the, we don't have nowhere near the same conditions we had in 2008 that we do today and that's that's my view on it what else, what else you got on? yeah it's i mean it's interesting to see it from like my view because i'm so new to this really um right. i can only imagine for other people that are just getting into real estate um that they're thinking the same way especially coinciding with like the stock market where we saw a huge rush in 2020 2021 and the same with real estate. And now we're seeing a downfall. Like, I didn't even know that real estate sat on the market for 60 days. I didn't know that was the average, like you just said. Um, so, and especially like you had, we've talked about how interest rates used to be higher than what they are now and like at 8%. And that was great. Um, so it's interesting to see it from a beginner perspective of, you know, how the market actually is. Because now I'm seeing you know, real estate sit on the market longer in 60 days to me sounds like a lot. Cause I was seeing it on for like 14 hours and then it would sell. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's interesting seeing it from, from this perspective. Yeah, now you see it. Now you're looking in uh, on Zillow or whatever. You're like, this has been on the market for 10 days. It got to be so cold with this <laughs> yeah. house, right? But no, the, I mean, yeah. but that's Our what mind. the Fed was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's what the Fed was trying to do. The Fed, they announced it. They said, we want to slow down housing. We want to slow down unemployment. They haven't got the employment under control yet because the unemployment rate is back down to 3.5%. So it will be further interest rate heights on the short term of the curve. But that's 
really what was that's really what's going on. They raise the interest rates so it's harder because if people don't know, well, hopefully people, if you're out there selling your house, people that's trying to buy your house is not buying your house based on the list price. They're buying your house based on that little algorithm. If you use Zillow, Redfin, or whatever, they give you a little calculation on what the monthly payments will look like. They are scrolling down to see what the monthly payments will look like. And with this interest rate, you know, back in 2020, 2022, you can get a $300,000, $400,000 house and still only be paying $1,400, $1,500 a month because the interest rates were so low. Now, the interest rates didn't damn near triple. So now, for that same $300,000, $400,000 house, you're paying, you know, $3,200, $3,800, $3,500 a month. And that is what's slowing down the buying process is because the monthly payments are higher. So the only way you're going to get them as a seller, if you're trying to sell your property, the only way you're going to get the monthly payments lower is if you drop the price because the banks ain't giving lower interest rates. I think the lowest one I heard this week was about a, a six, two, and that was for a 15, uh, 15, no, six, one. And that was for a 15 year. So that's, that's how it was, that's how it's going. So no matter what's going on in social media where they saying oh, it's going to crash, this is 08 again, 08 again. No, it's not 08 again. And another part in this video where he said it was 8 million people that lost their job. Yeah, now right now in the headlines, you're seeing people losing their jobs, people losing their jobs. But it's mostly from the white collar. Back in 08, everybody was losing their jobs. If you had a heartbeat, you was losing your job. And that, I mean, seriously, that's how it was. It was white collar, blue collar, CEOs. It didn't matter. I mean, all banking sectors. And, and right now, you see a lot of white collar jobs. You see the Salesforce, the Facebook, the Microsoft, all the, that, uh, you know, high end tech that's in California. All those jobs are cutting positions in a large way. Um, but you're not seeing it in the blue collar space, the services space and stuff like that. And that's what this movement is, is there. A lot of these companies are trimming the fat because. In 2020 and 20 through 2022, they was hiring more people because it was so much demand for the product, services, and goods that they needed the people to, they needed the the uh, employees to handle the demand that's happening. The demand's waning, they're trimming the fat off the companies. And that's that's the difference. It's not a just mass layoff. I mean, you're gonna see through this time, you know, we can go, you know, six, 12, 18 months. But during this time, you're going to see, and you should start hearing, real estate agents are going to be laying off. Uh, you're going to hear about bank people in the banking sector that's handling mortgages going to be laid off. And Wells, Wells Fargo just came out, and Wells Fargo used to be the biggest mortgage lender in the United States. It was like countrywide before the financial crisis. They, they're stopped doing uh, a lot of the residential mortgages. They're going back to focus on the disenfranchised communities and things like that. So they're trimming down their sector. But people at these uh, financial banks, lending companies, they're going to get laid off also because there's not enough traffic to go in. And just like the tech companies that hired a lot because of the demand back in 2020, 2022, the uh, financial ser service sector hired a lot of people for the demand for that time. So they're going to stop, you know, because now houses sitting on the market for 60 days. That's less traffic. So that's less people need to run the operation. That's less commissions real estate agents are going to get. So that's the dynamic that's happening now. It's not the mass exodus of, hey, I wake up, I got a job. Tomorrow I come to the door of the job and it's locked up saying, no, we closed. Because that's what it was like in a way. So with slower transactions, do you think, uh, like how we've talked about before, do you think real estate agents will assist the buyer more like say a buyer isn't using a buyer's agent but they go directly to the seller's agent do you think that seller's agent will do pretty much whatever they can just to make the sale or well as they can i mean it depends it depends on the agent it depends on the agent it depends on their book it depends on a lot but it's a lot of agents out here that don't have the clientele that don't have the book that don't have enough other revenue coming in from other places I can see, you know, cutthroat things start to happen, you know, because again, for people that don't know, real estate agents only get paid when the deal closes. So the real estate agent, no matter if it's the sales side or buy side, they're trying to do whatever they can to get the deal to close. So if you're a seller and you're still trying to get breakneck, the highest price on the market, your agent's going to list it for the highest price on the market. 
but they're going to try to keep them into you to lower the price, which you should lower the price, but they're going to try to do whatever they can. They, I mean, they might start talking creative financing. They might talk, talk and substitute. They might bring the ideal up to the buyer. Like, oh, you should make them pay uh, closing costs also. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot of crazy things that go on in this, uh, in this market. Cause remember these real estate agents are people too, and they have families and, and of course, it should be, all right, they're professionals first, but they have to think about their family. If you're if you're going to list a, a property that's no way in hell going to sell, they're not about to sit there and really try to advertise or put that property out to get it to sell if they already know the price is just insanely high. It's not going to happen. So you got to come to an understanding. And if you're on the buy side, you should be offering crazy low offers to get deals done because you don't know the situation people are in until you make the offer only deal that's not accepted is the one that's not given so provide offer that's lower than the list cost and see if you can pull off a deal that way because people will have different situations different reasons why they're selling but that's the way i look at it all right guys with all that being said if you like the video hit the like button leave a comment down below uh don't forget to subscribe share and we'll see you guys in the next video